Greetings in the most powerful and blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Sunday morning, uh, extraordinary Sunday morning where we are gathered together, not in this building, but we are gathered together in homes where we, as a people of God, can worship and can come before his presence because, as Jesus said in his word, now is the time that they that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. So, dear church, uh, I take this privilege to say a blessed Sunday morning to all of you. And uh, as we are at a time where nothing is usual, nothing is uh, the same as it used to be, I take this privilege to say uh, the Lord is our light. We begin this time together uh, uh, as you uh, are watching this broadcast through uh, the transmission that we're uh, relaying this through, through the YouTube channel that uh, we are providing this message today, I invite you, let's just take this moment, let's come before the presence of the Lord, and first of all, call upon Him, and let's join our hearts together as we begin this time together, as we will be turning to the Word of the Lord in a few moments, but first of all, committing this time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this new morning. Your mercies are new today, Lord. Your grace is new this morning. We thank you, Lord, as we gather together as your people in all the homes all over the city and wherever your people are gathered today. We thank you that you said in your word, when two or three are gathered in my name, there shall I be in the midst of them. And we thank you, Lord, that there is joy in your presence. There is life in your presence. There is safety and there is security in your presence. Because when everything else, Lord, seems to be overwhelming us, Father, in these trying and these very difficult times, when the world is being shaken, when everything that can be shaken is being shaken, yet we come to you, Lord, who is the rock of our salvation. Because we know, Lord God, that when we have been established in you and we have been founded in you, Lord, we can remain standing because, Lord, everything else may fall apart. Everything else, Lord, that can be shaken will be shaken. But, Lord, we have received you. And therefore, we have received your kingdom, which is the unshakable kingdom. And this morning, we thank you, Lord God, that as citizens of the kingdom of God, we can worship you with the liberty and with the freedom that you give us. And so, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you have called us to be a people of worship, a people of praise. And we respond to these trying times and we respond to these trying days, Lord, by coming before your presence. Because as you said in your word, the righteous run to you and they are safe. Because in your presence, O oh Lord, there is immunity and there is protection. So, Lord, for all the believers all over the city and all over the state and all over the nation of India, we pray, may they find their safety, their security in you. And today, Lord God, when everything else, Father, seems to be out of our hands and out of our control, we know that you are God. You're still sitting on the throne. And therefore, Lord, we have nothing to fear and we have nothing to be worried about. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so this morning, before we come to the Word, uh, as I will be turning this morning to the Word and sharing with you a few thoughts, as we know that at times like these, the place that we can come to and find our refuge is the presence of the Lord. And we come to the presence of the Lord by coming to His Word and hearing from Him and opening our hearts to Him and receiving from Him because the Word of the Lord is alive. And it is powerful. And so before we do that, let's take a moment to just come together and we will sing the song that is, you know, an old song from uh, one of the uh, recordings that we have from the Hillsong recording that uh, uh, I think so way back in the early 2002, sometime around, around that time, where uh, this is a song that has been taken from the Psalms and it's called You Have Made Me Glad. I will bless the Lord forever. I will trust Him at all times. 
He has delivered me from all fears. He has set my feet upon the rock. And I will not be moved And I'll say of the Lord You are my shield My strength My portion Deliverer My shelter Strong tower, my very present help in time of needs. Yes, Lord. Whom have I in heaven? There's none I desire beside you. Yes, O Lord, for you have made me glad, and I'll say of the Lord, you are my shield. My strength, my portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help, you are my shield, my strength. My portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of need. Yes, you are, O oh Lord. My very present help in time of need. You're my very present help in time of need. Yes. Yes, you are, Lord. And there is none beside you, O oh God. Lord, you are the strength of our life. You are our shelter. You are our refuge, Lord. So, Lord, we put our hope and our confidence in you today, knowing, Lord God, that, Lord, when we are surrounded by you, we are safe in your everlasting arms. So, Lord, today we thank you that in your presence, Lord God, we have this assurance. Amen and amen. Amen. So, you know, the song, of course, taken from the Psalms, constantly reminds us and calls us once again that in times like these, trying, difficult times for the world, we can call upon the name of the Lord. We can trust in his name. We can worship him. We can put our confidence and our hope in him, knowing that our God is our shelter, knowing that the Lord is our strong tower, and he is our portion and our deliverer. And so this morning, church, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, take this moment to say that uh, even though we cannot meet together in this building, but we are not 
in any way inhibited or, or can be stopped from being the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the church, of the, Lord, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the church that not only meets together, but it's the church that can be scattered all over. So as we're scattered all over the city in homes and in you know, places where we are meeting this morning to worship God together, I would like to say the presence of the Lord is in your midst. First, before I come to the word, I would just like to make some uh, clarifications as to why we cannot meet together in this church building this morning. As you all know that the world is going through a very difficult time and there is this pandemic that is affecting the whole world caused by this virus called the coronavirus. And governments of nations around the world have called for a period or for a time of quarantine where people from all walks of life are requested to please not to gather together or move out if not necessary, but to remain in their homes. And the reason being that in this quarantine period, uh, the virus can be contained and the virus can be pre prevented from further spreading. And so that those who have been affected can be helped and those who have not been affected can also be protected from the virus. So that's why we as a church have taken this resolution that uh, this morning we will cooperate and because we're responsible citizens who have a responsibility to our fellow citizens and so therefore we want to cooperate and to comply to the laws and the uh, advisories that have come from the government of our nation and the government of our state. So that's why we're not meeting together this morning. But uh, I take this privilege through the media that we have now to convey this word and to convey this message. Because in these, in these trying times and in these days where we are faced with the challenge, uh, first of all, I would like to say that the church is called to respond. But how we as the church respond will determine uh, whether we, we will be able to see the hand of God and God's uh, promises and God's word uh, uh, be, uh, being fulfilled. And so this morning, as the church of Jesus Christ, we take this privilege to respond to this present global challenge and to respond the way that the Lord would want for us to respond. And that is the response of completely trusting and putting our faith and our confidence in the hands of the Almighty God. And that's how the church is supposed to respond. And we can do so by standing on the word of God. And this is how we choose to come together this morning. And that is that we come to the word of God because the word of God is the word that can build up our lives so that we can have the faith to be able to not be moved, not be shaken by the things that are moving and shaking the world around right now. And this is the time that we can live out the mandate that God has given to us. And that is as a church, we've been, be, we've been given the mandate to be the gateway for heaven, yes, from the east. So that in times like these, beginning in Shillong, heaven can come and invade the situations where otherwise there is no hope, there is no help. But because when heaven comes and when what God has already planned purpose and laid up in heaven is being released to those different circumstances and situations, we know that there's always an answer, there's always hope, and there's always a solution, even though the world might not think so. So we need to hear the word so that our faith will be built up. We need to hear the word so that not only that our faith is built up, but we can be activated by the word that produces faith in our hearts so that it will be released in us and through us, and then we begin to function as the gateway for heaven to the challenges that are facing this world at this very moment. So at such a time as this, you know, these words that Jesus spoke in his instruction to the disciples when he answered them with their request to teach them how to pray, he said these words, let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on earth, here on earth as it is in heaven. And that is the instruction that Jesus gave his disciples and this, these words are the words that are, are echoing in my spirit this day because knowing that there is no 
challenge and no problems or no situations that we face on earth that our Father in heaven does not have an answer or a solution for. Therefore, you know, I urge upon all of you, my dear brothers, sisters, the church, you know, to, 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 to respond in such a way, to call upon the name of the Lord. This morning, in your home, with your family, may you call upon the name of the Lord in prayer, in supplication, in requests for the healing of the land. Yes, here in our country of India, but the healing of the land in terms of the nations of the world that are being ravaged, that are being affected by this pandemic that has been caused by the coronavirus. And so this morning, as, as you call upon the name of the Lord, call upon that name in faith, not just religiously, but call in faith because the word of God promised that when we call upon him, he will answer. He will answer. There's no, no prayers that the Lord will not hear and that he will not answer. And so, you know, this is what the Lord uh, urged the children of Israel by, by, by saying to Solomon, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's the call for us, church. We have been called, we've been chosen by God to call upon him because Jesus came to be like us so that he can bring us out of our sin into the salvation, into the freedom. So right now, this is the time for the church to identify ourselves with our world that we are living in so that we can call upon the name of the Lord and that the Lord can hear our prayer. And so we remember that, you know, we've not been given the spirit of fear. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, 7, for we have not been given the spirit of fear but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's what we have. We have the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. We cannot respond, we cannot do anything in fear. Fear will cripple. Fear will cause for us to panic as we're seeing what is happening in and around us. People are panicking. People are running around. People are living in fear. But church... We respond as citizens of the kingdom. We respond in faith. And that's why every day as we listen to the word and as we open our hands to the word, we can be encouraged to look to the Lord and to be able to, because we are responding in, in, in faith and we are responding in a way where fear will not be a factor. We can walk in the wisdom and the understanding that the Lord gives us. At such a time, of, at such a time as this, there is a need to walk in wisdom. I'm not talking about the wisdom of the world. I'm talking about the wisdom that comes from God, by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. Because at such a time as this, the wisdom that comes from God will enable for us to be able to respond to this situation in a way where we will be able to help and serve and be a blessing to all those around us. Instead of running away instead of hiding, instead of being crippled by what is happening. We can be active in our faith and by the love of God be able to see that there are ways and there are, you know, there are, there are opportunities in these trying times legitimately that we can take to serve and to help those who are around us. There are people who are in need right now. The world is in need. First of all, the need for us to stand in the gap to pray, the need for us to be able to call upon the name of the Lord because there is an answer that can come from the throne of God. We look at the world, we look at the nation of, uh, of Italy right now where till yesterday we, 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 we saw the number of lives that have been lost. Almost 790 plus lives in one day lost because of this virus. We cannot help but cry to God. For nations like Italy, like China, nations like Iran and Korea and many other nations that have been greatly affected. But also nations that are still under the threat, still under the, you know, this, 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 uh, uh, this uh, spread of this virus. 
uh, and, and that includes our nation of India. We need to stand in the gap and pray for our nation. And so this morning, finally, as, as, as I, I want to come to a close with, uh, with this word this morning, uh, I want to remind us from the passage that we read in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and verse 29. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and verse 29, the writer to the Hebrews remind us that since we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, since we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us offer acceptable worship to God with reverence and awe. For our God is a, is a consuming fire. We have received when we open our hearts and when we open our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, his kingdom came. And the kingdom that has been given to us, that is in us now, is an unshakable kingdom. And that kingdom cannot be moved by anything that is happening in and around us. So since therefore we have received this kingdom, we are called to respond in worship. And as we worship the Lord together, offering to Him the worship that comes out of a place of reverence and of awe, because God is sovereign. God is trustworthy. God is in control. He is seated on the throne. He is high and lifted up, and there is nothing that can shake Him. And because He's seated on the throne and He is in control, this morning I want to say, church, let's be reminded that because of the promise that we have in God's word, he is also the God who is the consuming fire that can consume whatever the enemy is coming at against us, be it this virus. Our God is a consuming fire. This coronavirus cannot stand before the presence of God. And we know that the fire of God can take care of whatever pestilence, whatever challenges that we are facing right now so as we turn to the lord this morning in faith and in prayer i invite you to join with me i invite you to join with me in putting to practice in applying the principles that we find in god's word second chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 verse 14 where god speaks to solomon when the temple had been dedicated and God reminding Solomon that he had accept the dedication of the temple. And therefore, the God who can shut the heavens, the God who can send the locusts, the God who can send the pestilence, he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Church, right now it's a time for us to humble ourselves. Right now is the time to call upon the name of the Lord and seek Him. And repent if there is anything that we know. We need to turn to God and ask for forgiveness. This morning, as a church, we turn to the Lord. Because, re because humility really is about our heart. The posture of the heart. Is our heart in right standing before the Lord? Is our heart in a place where we know we are in right relationship with the Father? This morning, if we're having issues that we know we're struggling with and we need to have our hearts right before God, I invite you to join with me as I call upon the name of the Lord together with you for our lives, for our church, for our nation, and for the nations of the earth. So Father, this morning, we know that we are challenged by this pandemic. And the pestilence that has come to affect nations of the earth. But Lord, we have your word. And your word says, if my people. We believe that we are your people. That you've called by your name. When you save us. When we, Lord God, turn to you. But Lord, we know that in our journey of following you, we need to check our hearts. We need to check our lives. Whether, Lord God, if there is anything that we need to come before you in repentance. This morning, Lord, 
we humble ourselves. Because Lord, who knows our hearts better than you? You know us, Lord, better than we even know ourselves. So I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us. You would wash us and you would cleanse us and you would make us new. And I pray, Father, that as you hear the prayers of the saints, as you hear the cry of those, Lord, who are, Father, from the place of knowing that they need to be in right standing with you today, Lord, as they call upon you for the forgiveness of their sins, Lord, we stand together. Lord, we say, forgive our sins, Lord. Forgive us, Father, when we've turned to the, to the ways of this world, when we've allowed the world to come even to our lives and to affect us instead of us being the light, Father, shining in the darkness. This morning, I pray you'd forgive us, Lord. And we turn back to you, Lord. Lord, we also pray, Father, because we know that we are right now in need of the supernatural intervention that can, can only come from the mighty hand that you and you alone can stretch forth, Lord, to the situation that is around us. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, for, for those who are, Father, right now affected by the virus, Father, we pray that you reach out and by your power, Lord, touch them and heal them. For those who are in danger, Lord, I pray that you would supernaturally protect and watch over them, Lord. All over the city, all over the state, and all over the nation of India and the nations of the earth. We pray, Father, for your hand of mercy and your hand of grace. Father, to be, Lord God, Father, upon each and every one. We pray for those who are in the front lines of helping people, serving people, Lord, in hospitals and in, Lord, medical centers around the nation and around the nations of the earth. We commit them to you and we pray, may you watch over them, may you protect them, may you give them, Lord God, your supernatural covering, Lord, because we know they are, Father, the front, in the front lines, they're the first responders, Lord, to the, the challenge that is before us. We pray for doctors, we pray for nurses, and all the medical people, Lord, that are working, Father, in death centers around the nation, Lord. We pray for them, and we commit them to you. And today, Lord, as the church, once again, we say, our trust, our hope, and our confidence is in you. And so, therefore, Lord, we believe that you have given to us the kingdom that cannot be shaken, and that you are the God who, by the fire that can quench and that can burn away everything that needs to be burned away, Lord, Father, today, in Jesus' name we pray. May you confirm your word and may you establish your word. And that we as your people can not only feel safe and feel secure, but Lord, the nations of the earth can know that there is a God in heaven and there is a God who can heal and who can deliver, who can protect and who can watch over. This is who you are, Lord. And we bless you, we worship you, and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Be safe. Take care of yourself. And let's... Uh, let's be cooperative with the things that have been uh, advised to us by the government so that uh, in this quarantine period, everyone will be taking care of one another by making sure that, you know, we are not allowing this virus to affect or to spread uh, around this nation, around the nations of the earth. So God bless you and God be with you as you, uh, you know, have a blessed week. Amen.